Tell him, McCluskey. Tell him what time it is. Little Hand says it's time to rock and roll. All you people are so scared of me. Come quietly or there will be trouble. Man, that's just me. I'm Batman. This is Sparta! There is a tiger in the bathroom. I'm an excellent driver. If it bleeds, we can kill it. Pop quiz, hot shot. Keep the change, you filthy animal. Do you know the Muffin Man? The Muffin Man? The Muffin Man. Yes, I know the Muffin Man. Who lives on Drury Lane? Well... She's married to the Muffin Man. The Muffin Man? The Muffin Man! Hello and welcome to this week's Monday Movie Show. I'm your host, Stuart, and I'm also joined by Andy. Good evening and welcome to this special one-year anniversary show, although not quite so special. Yay, whoop de doo We have no <laughs> cake or anything like that, and you can <laughs> see how happy I am with it. Yeah, if you're listening to la- um, to us live, it's a bit weird. We're going out at half past six. It's just that Andy is going off to see Ted. Lucky git. I have to wait until Wednesday to see that. Yeah. Um, coming up, we only have one review this week. That is... Um, the animation adaptation of Dr. Zeus's The Lorax. That took you forever. Did you actually forget the name of the film? No, I'm looking at my screen. I, I forgot Dr. Zeus. Is like, I, I didn't have Dr. Zeus on my screen. So I was like, oh, who, who wrote it? could have just said the Lorax. Yeah, but uh, Dr. Oh. Zeus. It's a, it's a Dr. Zeus thing. You know, you, you've got to give props to Dr. Zeus. You can't not. But yeah, not like a 10 second gap of nothingness and then the name. On top of that, we have the news. But let's start things off with the box office top 10. At number 10, Katy Perry, part of me. Yeah, um, although I'm surprised anyone went and saw this. It's not done brilliantly, as as people were probably expecting. It's only taken just over a million, and it's now heading out of the top ten. Um, it's been released in 3D as well, yeah, hey, but still didn't make me go and see it. I have no interest in seeing it. It's it's supposed to be part fiction, part reality, I believe, isn't it? Something like that. It's like the yeah. Justin Bieber film or what they did with Glee. Yeah, neither yeah. of which I've watched, neither of which I'm intending to watch. Yeah, one quick thing about Katy Perry. Um, like I said, when I put up the box office top 10 up on the site, this is the lowest taking number 10 film since 2008. It's a film released in 2008 called Caramel, which was, if I remember rightly, a Bollywood movie. That was at yeah. number 10. This is the lowest taking number 10 film since that. So it shows how bad it's done then. Yeah, uh, not number well. nine. At number 9, Prometheus. Which is still... I mean, it's heading out now, but it's it's doing a hell of a lot better here than it has done in the States, where it went out of the top 10 exceedingly quickly. Um, here, it's just taken just under 25 million at the moment. Um, it's a, it is a really good science fiction film, back to basics from Ridley Scott. Everyone was expecting it to be an alien film. It's not. It's tied into the Alien franchise, but it stands on its own and hopefully is the start of another trilogy, because I, I would like to see where it goes next. Yeah, well, before I go on to the next film, just a quick note that films from 8 up to now 4, that in, not including number 9 and 10, none of them have taken more than £100,000. So it shows how bad the box office was this week. At number 8, Men in Black 3. Yeah, um, this week has only taken just over 55000 in the UK. Um, the, the box office performance has been down, really, as a result, surprise, surprise, of the Olympics. Uh, Men in Black 3 is perfectly fine addition as far as I'm concerned to the, the series. A lot better than the second one, not quite as good as the first one, and lacking a lot of the laughs that the first one had, but purely because the first one was a lot of the ideas of that world being being shown and coming out, whereas now we already know that world. The only thing that's different this time is you've got Josh Brolin playing a younger Tommy Lee Jones when uh, Agent J travels back in time and meets a younger K. Yeah, and... Um, b- Again, I keep interrupting the chart. Um, I forgot to mention at the start of the show, if you have any questions for us, send them in via Twitter at EHDVD, at Cryptic Tadpole, or on the live chat on Spreaker. Right, um, number seven is Seeking a Friend for the End of the World. Yeah, which is a perfectly fine um, Steve Carell movie, and I, and that's coming from someone who doesn't like Steve Carell. Um, it is a romantic um, dramedy. Um, it's not particularly funny as a comedy. It's not anywhere near you'd expect to be from the trailer. It's, it is not Judd Apatow styled gross out. It is a genuinely heartwarming drama with little touches of subtle comedy here and there. 
um, to do with the the end of the world is coming, and Steve Carell and his neighbour, played by Kira Knightley, uh, have to sort of go on a run after their neighbourhood sort of starts falling apart because everyone's going crazy with the impending end of the world, and end up going on a road trip, and the two of them sort of ending up forming this bond. I, I enjoyed it, which I'm surprised at. Um, I think a lot of people won't, but give it a chance, and you might be surprised. Yeah, um, number six is the Bollywood film Cocktail. Yeah, um, we've not seen this, and we're not likely to see it because it's. I don't think it. I actually don't think it's showing anywhere near me here. But I, I probably wouldn't go and see it anyway because it's not my kind of thing. I don't know if, I, if I'd understand it as well as the thing. Um, the thing with Bollywood movies, I think they, they get, um, because they get released in limited release. They get released in areas where obviously the big collection of Indian people are. So um, they look at areas like that. So down in London, I think that's where they mostly get shown. Uh, and that's where they can get the audience. It's surprising to see a Bollywood film holding into the top 10 for more than a couple, uh, more than a week as well. And number five, Five Year Engagement. We haven't seen this yet either. It's a comedy drama. Um, it is, I believe, more sort of in the, not gross out, but the typical kind of comedy with a couple played by um, Jason Siegel and uh, Emily Blunt, where she gets a job that's going to take years years to for everything to go ahead, and their engagement gets built up and built up until eventually it's been a five year engagement. And number four, Magic Mike, which um, really did surprise me. Stephen um, Sonnenberg really holding back the reins of the cast as many big actors as you can in a film and just see what happens and actually focusing on a story on a main character which is played with surprising uh, maturity by Channing Tatum and with extremely surprising reserve from Matthew McConaughey's character as well um, about a male stripper there is plenty of male stripping in it but if there's any guys listening out there who've been put off purely because of that don't be surprised. Go along with it. Take take your women see it. I mean, you'll get point. You'll score points, and the next film that's coming out, you have to go. I went and saw Magic Mike. You can go and see this for me, and you might be surprised. It's a genuinely good drama. Yeah, number three, The Amazing Spider Man, which um, I've seen this again this week for the second time. I loved it more the second time. We spoke with Mark on our uh, Dark Knight Rises spoiler cast yesterday, during which I spoke with him about this as well. He's seen it now three times. Um, and he said that it gets Amazing Spider-Man gets better every time you see it. So from t pers a person who's seen it twice loved it more. A person who's seen it three times loved it even more. Much more faithful to the comic and the original character. And Andrew Garfield is a way better Spider-Man than Tobey Maguire. Yeah, I, I don't think it'll change my mind from the fact that I found the film very average. I loved Andrew Garfield. I thought he was he was fantastic as Spider-Man, so I agree with that. But I had so many problems with the film, including the CGI and some of the set pieces, that I don't think it'll turn my opinion around if I saw it multiple times. Well, one thing I will actually point out, um, just you saying that, I saw it in 3D when it first came out. I saw it in 2D this week. The special effects actually look better in the 2D than they do in the 3D. Well, I saw it in 2D originally, so again, I don't think it'll turn, turn my opinion around. At number two, Ice Age 4 Continental Drift. Which I still haven't seen yet. Yeah, which I have. Um, Mark, again, from Following the Nerd, we're not constantly mentioned Following the Nerd. It's just the fact that he's seen it also. And, um, he, we sort of agree with the fact that the Ice Age series is starting to lose its way now. Um, it, it brings in a lot of money. Well, evidently, this one hasn't done as well as they were expecting it to do. It's just the jokes seem to be the same kind of jokes rehashed. The storyline is, is nothing. There is no storyline in this film. Um, some of the jokes hit home really well. Scrat is obviously funny. He's the star of the Ice Age series. He, he's been the star of every one of the films, and so I'm still surprised that he's not got one of his film of his own, considering that the Minions from Despicable Me has just been announced that they are getting their own film. So Yay. I'm surprised that Scrat hasn't. And finally, number one, and you went for Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, are we really surprised? And I'm I'm going to shut up about this one after I was told to last week. Well, we've <laughs> said everything we could about the Dark Knight Rises yesterday in the spoiler cast that we did. Yeah, um, go and listen to that. It's on Spreaker. It's also on iTunes and SoundCloud and the site, and it's on Following the Nerd. It's it's everywhere. And Andy, like like Andy just said there, he went on about it just a little bit too much last week. He was like giddy little school kid. 
But it's understandable considering how big the film is and how much he's been waiting for it. So yeah, that is a film I've been waiting four years to see, and for all of the the Batman, all of the Christopher Nolan films to see that kind of film, and it paid off for me. All I can see is the fact that um, it's a brilliant film. It's a brilliant, brilliant film, but it's still not my favourite film of the year. Well, we'll come to that at the end of the year then. Yeah. Right, let's get on with some movie news. Uh, yeah, quick couple of bits from me, first of all. Um, related to the Aurora shootings uh, last week, uh, Warner Brothers has actually moved their upcoming film, The Gangster Squad, which was going to be coming out later this year, to early 2013 because of the shootings and a sequence at the end of the film which featured a shootout at Gorman's Chinese Movie Theatre. Um, as a result of that, that scene is now being reshot and they're changing. Uh, there's no details exactly on what they're going to do, but presumably they'll be moving it from that kind of a venue to something else so that the change can be made before the film's released. It's, it's due to now to be released in January. I believe it was originally supposed to be out in October. Yeah, um, how do you think they're going to handle reshooting? The, the, it is the finale scene, isn't it? It's supposed to be the, the final part of the film. And yeah, I mean, it's, that? well, I mean, it's, they could change it from being in a cinema to another location that's not anything like a cinema thing, I, I, I think would not have as much of an effect in it. So I, I think that's, if that's simply a case of doing that, I don't think there'll be as much of an uproar as there would have been at it. I'm still annoyed that things like this happen, that things get changed. I can understand, obviously, why it is. I would hope that come the time that the DVD and Blu-ray of it is released, that we would see that released just so because it's it's a shame when something happens that changes a film especially if it's already been done the film's already the, at the moment the film has been finished and ready to be released in a few months and now it's been pushed back so they can organize people's schedules get everyone together come up with a new ending and film it and it's a shame because of those that that, that terrible event yeah definitely uh the cast of the sixth fast and furious movies just gotten a little bigger and a little cooler. Uh, Indonesian actor Joe Taslim has been added to the cast. While you're not, you may not recognise his name, you'll recognise him if you've seen Gareth Evans' martial arts spectacular The Raid earlier this year, in which Taslim played the police lieutenant who led the SWAT team in the movie. No details have emerged yet on the role that he will play. Any guesses? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with villain. I mean, they've got a big enough That's team for good thinking. guys. He's going to be playing a villain. But, I mean... That guy, you've seen him in the raid. He's he's got acting chops. He's he's good. So I will. I have no qualm with him. I'm kind of excited by him being cast because he'll definitely be able to pull something off in it. Yeah. Uh, just before handing over to you, I'm going to actually just mention as well a trailer for a film called Cloud Atlas. Uh, now the trailer has just been I have just posted it on our website on mondaymovieshow.co.uk um, for anyone who hasn't seen it because I only saw it yesterday. It's a five and a half minute long trailer which, believe it or not, after watching, I was just amazed in awe of, and I still have no idea what the film is about. And it's based on a book of the same title, which I haven't read. But there's a, it's being directed by the Wachowski brothers, so people who are quite visionary, directors of The Matrix. Um, and it's got a cast including Tom Hanks, Halle Berry, Jim Broadbent, Susan Sarandon, and Hugo Weaving, among others. So have a look at that trailer, check that out, see if you're not as amazed as I am that a five-and-a-half-minute-long trailer didn't spoil a film. Yeah, and also, um, speaking about trailers, the trailer for Silent Hill Revelations is up on the site as well, which surprised me because I think it looks pretty decent. I yeah, like the I, first Silent Hill film. I looked at that as well, and even I'm like, okay, I, I admit that looks in theme with the first one. Yeah, but I've got dibs on reviewing it, though. Yeah, fine. I'm, I'm, I'm no no it. worries there. <laughs> Good, because I'm definitely i I'm definitely going to see it, and I want to review that. Right, um, I've got quite a few news stories, so I'll rattle through them quite quickly. Um, Frank Marshall, one of the producers on the Indiana Jones series, has indicated that a fifth film in the series is not going to happen. Marshall said, I see it for me, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull is the last hurrah. Well, it's not hurrah, because it's terrible. <laughs> I know that, yes, we talk about it, but there's no idea. There's no MacGuffin. He did actually use the word MacGuffin. Last we heard was that Spielberg and Lucas were working on a gem of an idea, doubtful, but apparently that hasn't developed into a fully blown script. Mm. Well, probably going to go back and redo one of the effects in something, knowing them. Yeah, they want to try and probably get Jar Jar Binks in there somewhere or something. Um, Robert Rodriguez has confirmed on Twitter that Lady Gaga is to make an act her acting debut 
in Machete Kills, Rodriguez said, I just finished working with Lady Gaga um, on at Machete Kills. She kicks so much.